You want the truth? America's been telling Africa for decades that we need them, their aid, their tech, their money to grow. They say real innovation lives in Silicon Valley in the halls of MIT. But look again. Look what we've done with the trash they throw away, actual garbage. While they burn trillions on foreign wars and bail out crooked banks, we're paving roads, stronger roads, with discarded tires. They call it waste. We call it infrastructure. Their highways crack every winter. Ours take the heat, the rain, the weight of time, and hold. Maybe the world should stop looking to Wall Street and Washington for answers and start paying attention to what unbought leaders can do. We don't need their permission. We don't need their loans. We don't need lectures on democracy from the same empires that prop up dictators whenever it suits them. We're showing the world progress doesn't come from puppet strings. It comes from within, from people who rise, not because they're allowed to, but because they refuse to be stopped. What if I told you that old discarded tires could revolutionize an entire nation's infrastructure? What if I told you that what most countries throw away as toxic waste, one visionary leader is using to build roads that are cheaper, more durable, and environmentally friendly than anything the developed world has ever created, you'd probably think I'm talking nonsense. But in the heart of West Africa, in a country that most people can't even locate on a map, something extraordinary is happening that has caught the attention of engineers, environmentalists, and development experts from around the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the incredible story of Ibrahim Traore and Burkina Faso's transformation from a forgotten nation drowning in debt to a beacon of innovation that's teaching the world how to build better. This isn't just another feel-good development story. This is about a man who dared to think differently when everyone said it was impossible. This is about turning the world's trash into treasure and proving that sometimes the most revolutionary solutions come from the most unexpected places. But before we dive into this remarkable journey, let me ask you something. Have you ever driven on a road and wondered why it cracked after just one winter? Have you ever seen mountains of old tires polluting landscapes and wondered why no one does anything about them? Well, Ibrahim Traore wondered the same things. And unlike the rest of us, he decided to do something about it. Picture this, Burkina Faso. 2022, a landlocked nation in West Africa, suffocating under the weight of international debt, a country where most of the infrastructure was crumbling, where roads would wash away with every rainy season or crack under the scorching African sun. Remote villages were cut off from cities by treacherous, unpaved paths where ambulances, fire trucks, and school buses would get stuck for hours sometimes with life or death consequences. This was the reality that Ibrahim Traore inherited when he came to power. But here's where the story gets interesting. Instead of begging for more international aid or taking on more crushing debt to import expensive road-building materials, Trior looked around and asked a simple question. What if the solution is already here? And that's when his eyes fell on something everyone else saw as worthless garbage, old automobile tires. Think about it for a moment. Every year, billions of tires reach the end of their useful life. In most countries, these tires become an environmental nightmare. They pile up in landfills, creating breeding grounds for disease-carrying mosquitoes. When burned, they release toxic fumes that poison the air and soil. When dumped in rivers and streams, they become sources of pollution that can last for centuries. But what if these seemingly worthless tires weren't waste at all? What if they were actually the raw materials for building some of the most durable roads on Earth? This is exactly what Ibrahim Traore discovered and what he's now proving to the world. Here's how this revolutionary process works. And trust me, it's going to blow your mind. First, teams of workers collect old tires from across the country, tires that would otherwise end up polluting the environment. These aren't just car tires. We're talking about tires from trucks, motorcycles, bicycles, anything with rubber that's reached the end of its road life. But here's where it gets fascinating. Instead of following conventional road-building wisdom, Trior's engineers lay these tires directly on the ground in carefully planned patterns. They're not randomly thrown down. Every tire is positioned with precision, creating a foundation that's both flexible and incredibly strong. Then comes the magic ingredient, a specially formulated cement mixture that bonds perfectly with rubber. This isn't your ordinary concrete. 
This mixture is designed to withstand the extreme temperature variations of the African climate, from scorching 120 degree days to surprisingly cold nights. The cement flows into and around the tires, creating a composite material that combines the best properties of both components. The result? Roads that are not only 40% cheaper than conventional alternatives, but also significantly more durable. But the benefits don't stop there. And this is where things get really exciting. You see, rubber has a unique property that traditional road materials lack. It's incredibly good at absorbing compression and vibration. When heavy trucks drive over these tire-based roads, instead of creating stress fractures like they would in concrete or asphalt, the rubber foundation actually flexes and distributes the weight more evenly. This means these roads can handle heavy traffic loads without developing the potholes and cracks that plague traditional roads. But even more impressively, they're remarkably resistant to earthquakes and extreme weather events. When the ground shifts or trembles, these roads move with it instead of breaking apart. And here's something that will absolutely amaze you, the environmental impact. Remember all those tires that were polluting the landscape? Now they're permanently sealed within the road structure, prevented from ever becoming environmental hazards again. It's not just recycling, it's upcycling on a massive scale. But the story gets even better. In many rural areas of Burkina Faso, journeys that used to take five grueling hours over dangerous, unpaved roads can now be completed in just one hour on these new tire-based highways. Imagine what that means for a pregnant woman trying to reach a hospital, or for farmers trying to get their crops to market before they spoil. The economic impact has been nothing short of transformational. Rayor didn't just solve an infrastructure problem, he created an entirely new industry. Thousands of young people now have jobs collecting, cleaning, sorting, and laying tires for road construction. From tire collection to road maintenance, every step of the process employs local workers, pumping money directly into communities that desperately needed economic opportunities. But here's what makes this story even more remarkable. Some local engineers have taken the innovation even further. They've discovered that filling the hollow centers of the tires with sand or recycled plastic materials makes the roads even stronger and more durable. It's innovation building upon innovation, with each improvement making the roads better and more sustainable. Now you might be thinking, this sounds too good to be true. What's the catch? Well, here's the thing. There isn't one at least not in the way you might expect. The real genius of this system isn't just in its technical brilliance, it's in its economic strategy. You see, most developing countries spend massive amounts of their foreign currency reserves importing expensive road-building materials like bitumen and asphalt. This creates a vicious cycle where countries go deeper into debt to build infrastructure that they can barely afford to maintain. But when you build roads using locally available waste materials, you completely break that cycle. Instead of money flowing out of the country to buy imported materials, it stays within the local economy, creating jobs and building skills that can't be outsourced or taken away. This is what Ibrahim Traore understood from the beginning. True development isn't about becoming dependent on foreign aid or imported solutions. It's about finding ways to use what you already have more effectively, and the world is taking notice. Delegations from Mali, Niger and Chad have already visited Burkina Faso to study this road-building model and explore implementing it in their own countries. European environmental organizations have praised it as an eco-road model that could significantly reduce pollution if adopted in low-traffic areas of developed countries. But for Ibrahim Trau, this road project represents something much bigger than just infrastructure improvement. It's a philosophy, a belief in the power of local innovation and self-reliance. It's proof that a poor country can astonish the world when it stops waiting for others to solve its problems and starts looking for solutions within its own borders. And speaking of astonishing the world, the tire roads are just the beginning of Chore's revolutionary vision for Burkina Faso. Let me tell you about another project that's going to leave you speechless. The artificial canal system that's transforming agriculture across the country. For generations, farmers in Burkina Faso lived at the mercy of unpredictable rainfall. Seeds would be planted with hope, but without adequate water. They would remain just seeds buried in dry soil. Crops would fail. Families would go hungry. 
and farmers could do nothing but look to the sky and pray for rain that might never come. This cycle of agricultural uncertainty kept the country trapped in poverty and food insecurity. But Ibrahim Traore saw this challenge not as an insurmountable obstacle, but as an opportunity for another revolutionary solution. The artificial canal system he's implementing isn't just a series of water channels. It's a comprehensive water management network designed to capture rainwater during the wet season and distribute it throughout the year to areas that need it most. Here's how this ingenious system works. During Burkina Faso's rainy season, instead of allowing precious rainwater to run off into rivers and eventually flow out of the country, the canal system captures and stores it in strategically located reservoirs. Then throughout the dry season, this stored water is channeled through an intricate network of canals to reach farmland across the country. The impact has been nothing short of miraculous. Farmers who once struggled to grow enough food to feed their own families are now producing surplus crops. Areas that were once barren and unproductive are turning green with thriving vegetation. The country is moving rapidly toward food self-sufficiency, and there's even talk of eventually becoming a food exporter to neighboring countries. But the canal system does more than just provide water for irrigation. It's creating an entirely new economic ecosystem. Fish farming is developing in the reservoirs. New agricultural cooperatives are forming as farmers gain confidence in their ability to produce reliable harvests. Young people who might have migrated to cities in search of work are now finding opportunities in their home villages. The transformation is so dramatic that satellite images of Burkina Faso now show expanding areas of green vegetation where there was once only brown, arid land. It's literally changing the landscape of the country. And this brings us to perhaps the most ambitious part of Ibrahim Traore's vision, the creation of a completely self-sufficient solar city that could serve as a model for sustainable development worldwide. Picture a city where every building, every home, every school, and every hospital is powered entirely by solar energy. A place where there are no power lines cluttering the skyline, no fossil fuel power plants polluting the air, and no crushing electricity bills burdening families. This isn't science fiction. It's exactly what Trior is building in the heart of Burkina Faso. The Solar City Project represents a complete reimagining of urban development. Instead of following the traditional model of centralized power generation and distribution, this city will be completely decentralized. Every structure will have solar panels on its roof, generating its own electricity and feeding excess power back into a smart grid that can redistribute energy where it's needed most. But the vision goes far beyond just clean energy. This city is being designed as a hub for technological education and innovation. Modern schools will teach students about renewable energy technologies, solar engineering, and sustainable development. Solar-powered buses will provide clean public transportation. Free solar-powered internet zones will connect young people to the global digital economy. Think about what this means for a country that was once so energy poor that many homes had no electricity at all. Children who once studied by candlelight will grow up in a city where clean, abundant energy is simply taken for granted. Young people will gain skills in cutting-edge technologies that will position them to compete in the global economy. The project is also creating thousands of jobs in manufacturing, installing, and maintaining solar energy systems. Instead of importing these technologies from abroad, Burkina Faso is developing the capacity to produce them locally, creating yet another avenue for economic development and self-reliance. But perhaps most importantly, the solar city serves as a powerful symbol. It demonstrates that developing countries don't have to choose between economic growth and environmental protection. It proves that the most advanced technologies can be deployed even in the world's poorest countries when there's political will and innovative thinking. International observers are watching this project with fascination. If successful, it could provide a blueprint for sustainable urban development that could be replicated across Africa and in developing countries around the world. Now, let me put all of this in perspective for you. What Ibrahim Traore is doing in Burkina Faso isn't just about building roads, canals, and solar cities. It's about fundamentally changing how we think about development, innovation, and problem solving. 
For decades, the conventional wisdom has been that poor countries need to wait for help from rich countries, that innovation only happens in well-funded laboratories in developed nations, and that the best solutions are always the most expensive ones. Traore is proving all of that wrong. He's showing that some of the most brilliant innovations can come from the places where resources are scarcest and needs are greatest. He's demonstrating that what looks like waste to one society can be treasure to another. He's proving that necessity really is the mother of invention. But there's something even deeper happening here. In a world increasingly divided between those who have and those who have not, between the developed and the developing, between the innovative and the dependent, Ibrahim Traore is showing a different path forward. He's proving that true leadership isn't about managing what you inherit, it's about imagining what could be and then making it real. He's showing that the most powerful force for change isn't money or technology or outside help. It's the courage to think differently and the determination to act on those thoughts. The tire roads, the canal systems, the solar city, these aren't just infrastructure projects. They're statements of independence. They're declarations that Burkina Faso will not be defined by its limitations, but by its possibilities. And here's what makes this story even more inspiring. It's just the beginning. Every success builds momentum for the next innovation. Every problem solved reveals new opportunities. Every person employed creates skills and expertise that can be applied to even bigger challenges. The young people working on these projects aren't just doing jobs. They're learning to see their country and their continent through new eyes. They're discovering that they don't have to accept poverty, dependence, and underdevelopment as permanent conditions. They're learning that with creativity, hard work, and bold leadership, any challenge can be overcome. This is why the story of Ibrahim Traore and Burkina Faso matters far beyond the borders of one small African country. It's a story about human potential. It's about what becomes possible when we stop making excuses and start making solutions. In a world full of problems that seem too big to solve, climate change, poverty, inequality, environmental degradation, the example of Burkina Faso offers hope. It shows that even the most complex challenges can be addressed when we're willing to think creatively and act boldly. So the next time you see an old tire by the side of the road, remember Ibrahim Traore. Remember that what looks like waste might actually be a building block for something amazing. Remember that the solutions we need might not come from where we expect them to come from. And remember that somewhere in West Africa, a leader who refused to accept the status quo is proving that anything is possible when you have the courage to imagine a better future and the determination to build it, one innovative solution at a time. The revolution isn't coming, it's already here, and it's being built with rubber tires, solar panels, and the unstoppable power of human ingenuity.